Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros. And today we're going to be answering the age-old question, which Ryzen CPU do I get? Let's talk about that. But before we do, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by GVG Mall, an online marketplace to gain access to some really awesome discounted game keys and more specifically Windows 10 licenses. So if you guys use the link in the description down below, type in code TB20, you'll get 20% off your Windows 10 Pro activation key, and then you just take the key that they give you, you type into the Windows 10 activation, and that's it, you have Windows 10 activated. We use GVG Mall to buy the Windows 10 keys for a lot of computers, like all of these computers, we use GVG Mall, and it's a very helpful resource that you can use today by using the link in the description down below, and also using code TB20 at checkout to save 20%. So let's continue this video. So the main concept of this video is actually revisiting a topic I made like two years ago when the first Ryzen CPU launch happened, talking about which Ryzen CPU to buy, and a fellow commenter uh, mentioned that he would like to see an updated version of this, so we were like, you know what, might as well. Uh, so we're going to be talking about different price ranges and which Ryzen CPU fits your needs, and also talk about what you can do with that PC, whether it's editing, live streaming, gaming, and kind of tell you the pros and cons of each option, all the way from the Athlon all the way up to potentially the new thread over that may be releasing here soon. So as of releasing this video, we're all the way up to third gen Ryzen. You heard it right, third gen. So we are going to be actually revisiting second gen and even first gen because you can actually still buy those brand new and there's a lot of used market options for those as well. So as far as the bottom of Ryzen goes, if you count this as Ryzen, here we have an Athlon 200 GE. This is a dual core processor that hyper threads to four cores. So well, you know, it's basically kind of like a Ryzen 3, but it's not quite there because it's not a true quad core, it's just a dual core. So, you know, this is a good way to get in to a Ryzen level motherboard and then upgrade later on, or it's also a good way if your Ryzen motherboard is not up to date for third gen, you can, you know, have AMD send you one of these. Um, but other than that, these aren't really like great. I mean, they do have Vega graphics on them, so you can use them for office computers and they will work, you know, perfectly fine. So these are not the best for gaming, but if you want to get into some light gaming, something like a Ryzen 3 would actually work pretty well. So that means, you know, 1200, 2200G, 3200G, those will actually get you into an entry level gaming computer. And if you throw in a graphics card, it's a whole nother story because that will be a gaming computer. Now, APUs and upgrading those APUs with graphics cards are a great starting point, especially on the used market and the new market. So definitely utilize all the resources you have available and don't be scared to buy used. You could save a lot of money on first and second gen Ryzen if you do choose to do so. But now stepping up to the mid range, we normally like to look at the Ryzen 5. You might notice a trend here. Low end is Ryzen 3, mid range Ryzen 5. AMD has kind of done a good job at categorizing their processors based on your needs and what you're gonna be using them for. So we like the Ryzen 5 1600 and 2600. There are also the APU processors, the 2400G and the 3400G, which come in at being four core and eight threaded processors, and they do come with those integrated graphics. Those processors are kind of in the weird middle ground between the Ryzen 3 and the higher end Ryzen 5s, mainly because they have APU graphics, but they're only four cores and eight threads. And just for a little bit more, you can get a six core and 12 threaded processor like the 1600 or 2600 that's good for gaming and also live streaming, which if you want to see a live streaming PC featuring the 2600, hit the I in the top right corner, wherever that is. Uh, you can watch that PC and see in it a recommendation that we have for an entry level streaming PC. But really with a 2600, even up to like a third gen Ryzen 3600, you can handle graphics cards of like RTX 2070 range or below, whether that's an RX 5700, 5700 XT, a lot of those, and we will try to link as many of the builds as we've done, which we do a lot of Ryzen builds, down in the description down below or in the eye in the top right corner if you want to see specific examples of these builds. But the mid-range is the best value for your money, the price to performance, so to speak, that we like to recommend. Um, and then if you do want to branch out even higher, we do have what's called Ryzen 7 and also Ryzen 9. So as far as Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 goes, we don't really have Ryzen 7 right here, but we have a Threadripper and we have a 3900X. Yeah, this thing is beautiful right here. So this is a 12 core, 24 thread processor that boosts up to 4.6 gigahertz. Doesn't get much better than that and it has loads of cash, so do the Threadrippers. So as far as like gaming, we're kind of getting out of that and getting more into like editing and rendering. I mean, obviously these would work amazing for gaming, but like, most graphics cards aren't even gonna really be able to, I guess you could say keep up with them unless you're like in a 2080 Ti range. Anything below that, it really just makes sense to go with a Ryzen 7. Um, that's, you know, a newer generation one. But if you're wanting to get into some major rendering and editing, then 
Threadripper and Ryzen 9 are definitely the way to go. Even like first gen Ryzen 7 CPUs are really good value for money. Jax and I still use them in our personal rigs, uh, 1800X, 1700, and they've been perfectly fine for doing 4K video editing. So it's really easy to get a Ryzen 7 CPU and be stuck with that thing for a few years, honestly. How long has it been? It's been a long time. It's been like two, two, three years now. Yeah, it's been, I mean, since AMD released the 1700 and 1800X. Like, it's been almost three years now. Yeah, so. so like we literally got them and like, I don't even feel the need to upgrade yet. It's still working great for me. Yeah, so with a Ryzen 7, you really can't go wrong. Um, but as always, there's always another option and that's Threadripper. And right now Threadripper is in a weird spot because at the time of recording this video, there is no third gen Threadripper right now. Um, you can get higher core count CPUs on the second gen Threadripper platform, but we're not gonna talk about that too much because the majority of you guys are here for the gaming parts. And Threadripper is more for the high-end workstations, things that require a crap ton of cores, 24 cores, 36 cores. Those are options that you can get with Threadripper and eventually in the future, even higher core counts. So right now, Threadripper is kind of in a weird spot. You could look on the used market to get a Threadripper processor, like 16 cores, like 1950X, but you're not gonna get the best gaming performance. You're gonna get mainly the raw editing and core count performance that you would need for multi-threaded applications. So I wouldn't really stress too much about these, but if you're somebody who's in the market for a Threadripper that I just took the top off, you already know what they're capable of and why you'd be actually getting one. So if you're just an average gamer, don't really worry too much about these. We highly suggest focusing mainly on the Ryzen 5, and if you want to expand to some more higher end content creation, Ryzen 7 is the way to go. And maybe if you could get your hands on one of these, the Ryzen 9 would basically be your processor for a very, very long time. So I think now it is some role play time. Uh, one of us is gonna be the dummy, the other is gonna be the tech expert. So let's do this. So I, so I wanna play uh, Fortnite at a uh, high refresh rate. Uh, which Ryzen CPU should I go with? Just playing Fortnite. Are you on a budget? What kind of budget are you looking at? $600. So $600, I'd probably say to go with something like a Ryzen 5. You're probably gonna wanna go something a little bit older, like a 2600, maybe even a 1600. So you know, Ryzen 5 would work great for this. I'm looking for an organization, by the way, sign me. I'm Fortnite pro god, 6.9. <laughs> I'm looking for a computer that has a specific processor that I can Skype my granddaughter and my grandchildren across the seas. What do you recommend? Well, you really don't need a whole lot. So I'd probably look at the Athlon or maybe even some pre-built systems that come with like Ryzen-based processors. So this, this is a computer right here? This is a oh, whole damn. computer right here. God damn, god damn. But <laughs> no, yes, Athlons are great options for home and office PCs and I would definitely recommend it. No need for a graphics card either because it comes with integrated graphics. So I'm a professional editor. I edit a lot of Fortnite videos and potentially some Minecraft Let's Plays. So, you know, speaking of that, we actually just did a build uh, eye in the top right left corner, you know, somewhere. But we actually went with the 3800X for that build because for 1100 bucks, 3800X is something like a 5700 or a 2060, maybe a 2070 if you have the money. Well, that's gonna really do well for video editing and some slight gaming on the side. So that basically gives you some examples of situations that you may be in if you're looking for a Ryzen processor. There are a lot of different ones, and if you are kind of still confused on which one to get, comment down below. People down below will be more willing to help you, um, and we'll try our best to answer comments down below as well. But overall, Ryzen is in a great place right now. You could get a processor at any price point, and it will perform really well for your use case. Hopefully at some point Intel steps up and brings something to the table that matches the value for money that Ryzen is delivering right now. But right now, it's just kind of all team red right now. It's a and Ryzen world. It's a Ryzen world. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, links down below. You just got my grandchildren. <laughs> just got my grandchildren.